yeah so in our previous session we have uh, started wait a minute let me check the recording yeah so in our previous sessions we have started with the discussion of uh, uh, risk v overview and assembly assembly to binary uh, conversion and we have seen the standard extensions a brief overview of the standard extensions and register sets instruction formats so these we have already discussed in our previous sessions okay so in today's session we will start with the introduction of rv32i instruction set architecture and uh, we will see what are these general purpose registers and importance of this general purpose registers okay and we'll see a simple uh, instruction uh, what are how r type instructions look like and i type instructions look like and s type u type instruction look like and we will see that okay so so first we will start with the uh, introduction to rv32i instruction set architecture so rv32i that is risk v 32i is the base integer subset of risk v instruction set architecture isa so this is basically a subset of this whole risk v uh, isa instruction set architecture so this isa in this isa uh, instruction set architecture this rv32i is a uh, small subset okay so it includes 32 general purpose registers labeled from x0 to x31 so there will be 32 general purpose registers that are labeled from x0 to x31 okay so there are total 31 uh, general purpose registers and what are the size of these registers the size of this register is 32 bit okay since it is rv 32i so size of each register is 32 bit okay register uh, x0 is hardwired to constant 0 so register first register x0 is hardwired to 0 so all the values in this register will be equal to 0 only okay and register r uh, x1 is conventionally used to hold the written address on a call so we will see uh, uh, what is the purpose of each register in detail uh, in the upcoming slides so for now uh, we will see this uh, wait a minute so for now we will see the architecture of RISC-V uh, ISA base architecture what we are going to see and what we are going to design first we will see that and we will come back to this registers okay so in this RISC-V architecture uh, what we are going to learn and what we are going to design is uh, so I will draw the architecture so PC and we have instruction memory like this instruction memory like this and we have a register unit or so we have a register unit like this and we also have a control unit CU and uh, finally we have a ALU This is the ALU. So for this uh, PC we have clock and uh, reset signals and this instruction memory we also have reset and uh, this ALU will be fed by this data which is coming from this register unit so there will be data 1 and data 2 which will be given to our ALU like this and there will be a control unit which is going to control all the uh, components that is our PC, instruction memory and register unit as well as our ALU okay so control unit will be uh, going to control all our components and this program counter is uh, associated with our instruction memory. So this PC is called as program counter. Okay. So we'll discuss uh, each and every component in detail. So this is called as program counter and this is called as instruction memory uh, register unit 
and control unit and uh, ALU. So all the instructions will be stored in our instruction memory. All the instructions which we are going to discuss, what are the type of instructions R type, I type. So wait, this, these are the instructions we are going to discuss R type, I type, S type, U type. All these instructions are going to store in our instruction memory. We will discuss about this instruction memory also in, in detail and the control unit also in detail and this ALU. So for today's agenda is, uh, our agenda will be on register unit R U. okay. So what is this register unit? So we will discuss about it, okay. So in this register unit, uh, there will be total 32 registers, okay. There will be total 32 registers in this register unit, okay. Now let's see about this register unit. So these are also called as general purpose registers, GP, GPR, okay general purpose registers. So there will be 31 registers for holding the integer values. Okay. There will be total 31 registers to holding for holding the integer values. Uh, first register X naught uh, will hold only the zeros. Okay. It will be hard coded to zeros and the remaining registers will be holding the integer values. So X naught is always zero in RV32 registers are 32 bit wide. Okay. Whereas in RV64, register width is equal to 64 bit okay whereas in case of rv128 the register bit is uh, width is equal to 128 bit okay. like that according to the specification the register widths will be varying okay so now let's see what is the importance of this registers in risk v architecture registers provide the fastest access to the data compared to other memory types example cache or main memory so this registers are used to store the data actually and this uh, and the data which has been stored in this registers will be used by our ALU and uh, it, it is used to store the data basically. So the uh, operations which we want to perform uh, upon the data, that data will be stored into our register from the instruction memory. So the ALU can access this data or any other component can access this data from the registers very easily. Okay. And the operations performed using this registers are significantly faster, improving the overall performance of the processor. Okay, is this clear? Is this clear about the importance? Yeah, it's clear. Okay. Energy efficiency. So accessing the data from the registers consume less power. So it's also consuming less power compared to the accessing data from the cache or main memory. Okay. So instead of uh, uh, accessing the data from instruction memory or data memory, so actually in the architecture miss one memory, so there will be data memory also. In that we are going to store all that data, okay. So there will be two types of memories, one is data memory and another is instruction memory. So in the instruction mem memory, we are going to store the instructions, whereas in case of data memory, we are going to store the data. So this data memory, the data which has been stored in this data memory will be going to our register unit and the data will be stored in into that registers and from that we are going to access uh, the data to our ALU, okay. Yeah. So coming to the energy efficiency, efficient use of registers can lead to the reduced power consumption which is crucial for battery operated and energy sensitive devices. Simplification of instruction set. So the fixed number of registers simplifies the instruction encoding and decoding process. The consistency helps in designing simpler and more efficient hardware. And it also improves the flexibility of programming. So registers uh, provide a flexible way to store and manipulate the temporary data during the program execution. And they are also used extensively in arithmetic operations, functional calls and control flow management. Okay. So these are all cases where registers are very helpful and coming to the uh, role of each register. So we will see the briefly about role of each register. So X naught is hard coded to zero and uh, it is useful for initializing the values. So we, we need some initial values for every uh, thing, right? So basically this registers, uh, this register X naught is used to initialize the values. And uh, it is also used as a placeholder in the instructions that require a register operand. And X1 is used as a return address and X2 is used as a stack pointer and X3 is also used as a global pointer. 
and X4 as thread pointer and X5 to X7 as temporary registers. So the data, temporary data can be stored into this X5 to X7. Okay. And X8 is for saved registers or frame pointers and X9 saved registers and X10 to X11 as argument registers and X12 to X17 as argumented registers and like this. So there, uh, there is no uh, compulsion that we, we need to use these registers like this only. We can use them as we need, but this is a standard. Okay. So if we want, we can use this as a save, um, we can assign the specific functionality to, the, to this uh, particular register like this. Okay. So there is no compulsion that X9 should be a saved register like that. So it is uh, basically, this is a standard we are discussing. Okay. Is it clear? Is this register architecture clear? Yeah. yeah, perfect. So like this, the registers will be present like a key. So stack, okay. So X naught, X1, so on to X31. Like this, 32 registers will be there. And for each register, uh, we can define our own functionalities also. Okay, so uh, one register should perform uh, some functionality like that also. We can uh, give. Okay, now coming to the base instruction format. So we have four types of formats. One is R type, and another is I type, H type, and U type. R type is register type, I type is immediate type, and H type is storing and U type. So here. Uh, we have uh, different formats for each uh, type of instruction. So in our type of instructions, this is the uh, instruction format. So first seven bits is opcode and seven to 11 bits is read RD. This is destination register. And 12 to 14 is function three and 15 to 19 is RS1. This is source one. And this is source two, okay. And this is function seven. And coming to the I type, we have opcode. So zero to six is opcode. So in next session, we are going to see what is this opcode function three, function seven. So for now, uh, just see the instruction. Okay. So R type instruction is framed like this. Okay. And I type instruction is framed like this. So if you want to, uh, if you want uh, to frame a R type instruction, you should you should write the instruction in this format only. So it will be a R type instruction. And coming to the I type instruction, the instruction format will be like this. So IMM is the immediate value and RS1 function three RD opcode. So like this, the instructions will be framed. Okay. So in detail, we will see in our next session uh, about this, what is this opcode, what is this RD, what is this function three RS1, RS2, function seven, like this in, in detail, we will see in our next session. So yeah, so that's all for today's session. So we have seen about uh, the architecture of RISC-V and uh, what are all the components which we have in our RISC-V. So uh, before wrapping up the session, I want to uh, tell you one more point. So from the register unit, we have seen, right? So the two data item, uh, the two outputs will be given to our ALU. So this is for the, so these are the two outputs. So these are the address for the two outputs. Okay, uh, no problem. We will discuss uh, in detail about in this, uh, in our next session, okay. Yeah, so in our session, in today's session, we have seen uh, the introduction to RV32i and uh, the introduction to the RISC-V architecture, a brief introduction, and what are all the components which we are having in our RISC-V architecture and what we are going to design. And we have seen the introduction to general purpose registers and how these registers are used in uh, what are the roles of these registers. And we have seen the instruction formats, a brief intro to instruction formats. Okay. So we will discuss uh, about this instruction formats in detail in our next session. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.